Does your footage ever look a little bit too orange or maybe too blue? Don't worry, we have DaVinci Resolve. It's not ruined forever. Today I'm going to share with you the most accurate way to correct and white balance any 10-bit log footage in post-production with just a couple of sliders. Just look at some of these shots before and then after. All of this heavy lifting is done with the Chromatic Adaptation OFX plugin. However, to set it up correctly, a little bit of understanding is required, so let's learn together with three simple steps. Step one, scene to display. And I'm gonna start by saying this technique is gonna work best with log encoded footage, and you may already be well aware that log encoding is a camera trick so you can capture more values of light into a single video file, but the log color spaces, they actually also record a wider, like a bigger range of color information. It's like, think of a, a bigger box of crayons or what we call a color gamut with a T. This flexibility allows us to fix the incorrect white balance without even needing a raw file. Just make sure you know which log profile you're looking at. And if you don't know, ask, you know, or check the metadata, which I do have a few metadata sleuthing tips coming up later. DaVinci Resolve 20 has multiple ways to take this log encoded footage and transform it. So it has contrast and saturation so we can actually make proper color assessments on the image on the display. One of those is on the color page is there's a color space transform, but today I'm gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna use project-wide color management. So if you go under the file drop-down menu, down here to our project settings, shift nine is a shortcut to get there. We can come down to color management, change our color science from DaVinci YRGB, which basically says, DaVinci, leave my colors alone. I'm gonna deal with them myself. I'm gonna get some assistance from Resolve instead. And I'm gonna change this to DaVinci YRGB color managed. And I'll change the color processing mode to HDR because if you shot log, that's HDR. And our output color space is gonna be SDR Rec 709. That's gonna be your typical TV, you know? That's gonna work good on YouTube as well. I'll hit save. And as soon as I do that, nothing really changed over here. And the reason why is a lot of times when you have non-raw clips and you turn on color management, it doesn't have the metadata correctly to uh, do the mapping for you. Now that's not always the case, but on these first three clips here, these are Sony clips from a Sony FX3. And so I need to assign the metadata. A quick way to batch assign the metadata is to select them in your media pool. You can shift select them and then you right click and come down here to our input color space and I'll change this to Sony. And I'm gonna choose sgamut 3cine slog 3 That's what you should be shooting if you're using the current Sony you know, log formats. And as soon as I do that, you'll see it's, it's basically done the tone mapping, the color conversions, and we can see that one's totally underexposed. That one's super blue. This is really orange and green. So we'll fix that easily in step three. But I do wanna point out, if these shots lat down here, these ones did convert from the log to seeing it properly. Well, it's obviously the white balance is wrong. And that's because these were shot with the Blackmagic cam app on the phone, which has the ability to shoot Apple log, but also bake in that metadata that it knew that it was Apple log. So if I take a look here, if I right click on one of these clips here and I go down to input color space, you'll see it read the Apple log in the QuickTime file itself. So sometimes you can have metadata embedded and that's real helpful, but otherwise you do need to know how the thing was shot, so ask if you don't know. Step two, objective grayscale reference. Now, one of the magical things about our eyes is that they rapidly adjust to create a white balance with how the cone cells in the back of our retinas interact with our brains. It's sort of a miracle but the color is always in context with the surroundings. So what if the surroundings had zero color, as in we save a black and white version? Then we can compare the white balance objectively with an image split wipe, which is a cool Resolve color page feature. On the DaVinci Resolve color page, we're working color managed, and if for whatever reason you did not assign the correct input color space, you can always do that over here as well by right clicking and you've got input color space available since color manage is turned on and then just choose the correct color setting that was you know, used. Uh, this is not subjective. You can't just choose airy because you want it to act like airy. It needs to be what actually shot the camera. So if you don't know, you should ask. The first node in any setup, I like to adjust exposure. And I'm gonna do that before even creating the black and white reference to it. So I might come over here and label this. If you come to right click on a node, you can say node label. And I might just type EXP to label that as exposure. And then if you wanna have the same node be ready on all of the other subsequent nodes, I could even just copy this so that, see how this one's not labeled yet? If I shift select all these and I middle mouse click the one that I wanna copy from, 
by just middle mouse clicking. Now, if I come to these other nodes, you'll see that's set to exposure. And there's a couple of these that, that need some exposure love, like this shot right here. This is way, way too dark. So all that signal is down there. If you come to the HDR wheels, normally you're in the primaries. If you come to the HDR wheels and under global, this exposure slider here is a lot like the ISO that's in a camera. So I can just crank this up and it's just like I turned up the ISO in camera, but I'm doing it in post. And there's really not a, a huge penalty to this. Um, obviously it would have been better if I had more light, had opened up the lens more maybe. But now we have some signal we can work with. I might do that same thing over here on this node. Just bring this up a little bit because it's a little bit dark. And then I'm going to add a new node to create um, both our chromatic adaptation and our reference black and white image. So if you right click on a node, you can say, I want to add a node and we're going to add a serial node afterwards. You can also hit Alt or Option S to create a new node. And on this new node is where I'm going to create the black and white image. The fastest way I know to desaturate something is this RGB mixer over here. So if I click this, there's a monochrome button. I can right click on the image, grab still. So the idea is I'm gonna grab a still for each of these so that we can wipe against the color version using chromatic adaptation. So in fact, if I wanted to just copy this node to other nodes and just the single node, I can hit Command C or Control C, come to this one over here, Option S, Command V, right click, grab still. You can see how this can go pretty fast. So Option or Alt S, um, I'm going to Command V, I'm going to right click, I'm going to grab the still, and we'll keep going. Option S, Command V, right click, grab still. Option S, Command V, right click, grab still. There's also, just so you're aware, if you want to do this on a big batch, you can grab all the stills in your timeline from either the first or middle frame. Just another way of going about it. Now that we've got stills for all these first frames, I'll come back over here. And we can come over here and say reset node grade. Basically, it wipes out the correction on that node because I'm going to use this second node here for doing our chromatic adaptation next. So I'll just reset, 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 reset. And the way the image wipe works over here is up here in the upper left of your viewer, right? If you have more space, You'll, have, you'll see th three options. Let me move this over. You can see now there's a image wipe. Uh, this is for split screen, so comparing versions and stuff, and this is your highlight mode. So this right here, your image wipe, select the image you want to wipe against, which is this one right here. So that's the same frame. So we can drag and see what the color image is, and we can see what the black and white is. So the idea is because we have context now that this car should maybe be white, I can adjust the chromatic adaptation in step three to match this so that we are matching against a, a good reference Z to fit and we'll do the same thing over here just make sure you choose the right image that you want to wipe against you can see this one is super yellow and we know how much yellow we want to correct maybe we look down here at the ground and look at the white paint so that's the the wipe setup if you want to disable this click the button or command or control W will uh, enable and disable that wipe step three chromatic adaptation the Chromatic Adaptation Transform OFX plugin performs complex matrix multiplications that perceptually match the long, medium, and short cones in the back of our eyes because our brains interpret colors differently depending on the lighting source. The tool operates based on an LMS color model, which you can certainly explore further. Chromatic Adaptation in the Resolve Color page is found under the effects. So go to Resolve Effects Color, just drag that right onto a clip and it's already working color space aware. We're all set up and good there. Now, what you need to know is there's a target illuminant and a source illuminant. And the difference between these two is the target should basically, you should tell the software, what did the camera color temperature, what was the color temperature of the camera setting when you recorded, okay? Which we don't always know. And then the source illuminant, which is what this whole scene, what it was actually really lit by, what was that color temperature? And there's presets here, there's standard illuminance. I'll flash up a, a still right now of what all the standard illuminance are so you can make a best guess. But sometimes you can get to the metadata. For instance, this clip right here was shot with a Blackmagic phone app with Apple Log, but because it was using that app, it recorded the color temperature within the file. Uh, Sony does the same thing, and I'll show you how you can find what the actual color temperature was so you can get a really nice, precise looking uh, white balance. And so the target illuminant, again, I'm looking for the, what the camera shot it with. I'm going to go to the edit page, metadata of it. So select the clip, hit metadata over here. And then if you don't see all the parameters, you can hit all groups. 
scroll on down and we can see, there we go, white point Calvin and on this one was 2,900 and the tint was five. So remember that 2,905 color page, instead of illuminate type being standard on the target, this is where the camera information goes under target. Color temperature, Calvin was 2,900 and the tint was five. And right away, we've got a pretty good result. So it's saying that the source illuminate was D65, which is close, but not quite. It's a little cloudy outside. So this is where we can use a black and white still to wipe to, to really, really perfect it if we need to. So I'm selecting my black and white still over here. Gonna hit the image wipe button. And with that image wipe button, we can now see there is a little discrepancy. You see it's a little bit yellow on the, the corrected version versus the black and white. So I might just take this, and instead of saying the illuminate type in the actual scene was the D65, I can try other presets. In fact, you know, I've got a list here that shows you what those different presets are. Maybe I say it's D50, and that's actually not too bad. But if you need to refine this and, and really control the color temperature, these are just starting points. So you can change the illuminate type here to color temperature instead. And you can see that preset was a tint of one with a Calvin of 5002. When I look at this, I'm making just an overall guess that this is maybe a little bit too blue if I want that to be completely neutral. So if I want to get rid of some of the blue, I just increase the color temperature uh, till it starts to get more neutral. In fact, I might just remove the tints completely. Um, and, and maybe that's a, a better spot right there. So if I disable the wipe and I say, turn the gray on and off, uh, I can hit Shift D or this button right here. We've made a drastic um, improvement to the shot here um, with basically knowing that metadata and then just sort of tweaking based on what we thought the scene was. So the, the camera metadata is the target, the scene is the source. Now let me just show you a couple other tools that I use to find metadata on files to find that color temperature that it was shot with. So this shot over here, this is a Sony clip. If I right click on it, I can say find a media pool. Then I can right click on it and say reveal in finder. It's down right over here and the tool, first tool I want to show you is Sony Catalyst Browse. So if I load this clip into here, which I've already done, once you load a clip into Sony Catalyst Browse, it stores that metadata in the MP4 file, even though DaVinci Resolve isn't able to read it. Uh, just come over here to the right side, scroll down, and we can see, yeah, down here towards the bottom, this white balance was set to 3000 on this clip. That's why it looks super white. So again, I would sort of rinse and repeat what we've done before. So we know it's 3000 was what it was shot with, drag it onto the clip. What it was shot with, it means target. I will change this to color temperature, change this to 3000 and D65 luminate. Hey, it's not too bad. You can, again, of course, you can come over to your gallery stills, do that image wipe, and we'll see the black and white difference between those two. Maybe find something that's neutral, like this gray, zoom into here and you know, maybe it's it's a touch green or something, but you can come over here and refine this with color temperature all day long to, to get things to, to where they need to be. Um, hey, that's not too bad. There's a couple other tools I wanna bring to your awareness. One is called Media Info, which is a free tool that you can use. So I dragged this exact same clip into Media Info. Comes in like this, click this button over here to get all the information about the shot. Scroll down, you can see yeah, white balance first frame at red 3000. If you use ARRI footage, uh, there's a tool called the ARRI reference tool, A-R-T, uh, that can find a lot of information about lenses, all sorts of stuff. So the real thing to remember is you set your target to whatever the camera recorded in camera, and then the source is whatever the actual scene was. Yes, there are many other methods to balance a shot like offset, HDR global wheels, and linear gain, but none are quite as accurate as this. They might just be a little bit faster to use. Welcome if you're new to the channel. I'm Chadwick, a New York-based certified DaVinci Resolve master trainer and finishing artist, and I'm one of your biggest fans. And I also do offer one-on-one -on -one training. But if you're curious about some other shot matching techniques that I use, you might be interested in this video that I have about using color channel viewers with printer lights, where you can learn how to actually match color between shots without even seeing color. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.